my name is Quincy Morgan. I am tech lead at OpenStreetMap US. Um, great conference so far. Uh, thanks, Ming, for the great talk right there. I'm involved in the Americana project, so it's cool to see that on stage. Today, I'll be talking about authoritative crowdsourcing with public domain map, which is a project of OpenStreetMap US. Now, just the title, authoritative and crowdsourcing are next to each other. It turns your head sometimes, so I'm going to try to convince you that this is possible um, and how you can get involved. Um, of course, OpenStreetMap is great. You know this power of the crowd, strong community. There's a lot of great people involved, and that's why you're all here. I don't have to tell you all this. Uh, it has an ODBL license, which protects a lot of contributors um, and encourages uh, contributions. And of course, it's free. So this begs the question, uh, where are all the government folks? There's some of you guys here, but it's free, great data. Why aren't more government agencies involved? Not just at the federal level, but at the state level and at the local level. Um, so why can't the US government embrace OSM? It's a complicated question once you get into it. And I'm not saying that some agencies don't use it. Of course, Darrell just gave a talk about it. Um, but it, we would really like um, any government agency to get involved in the project if they could bring that resources and bring you know civic engagement uh, and civic participation um, in terms of mapping to uh, the US public. And the short answer to this question is licensing, um, but there's also a lot of data needs that differ between um, government and OpenStreetMap. Um, because when you're the government, you want data in a certain format and such. Uh, first of all, all government data uh, needs to be published with a public domain license, more or less. It needs to be authoritative. You can put that in quotes if you want, but um, Authoritative is, you know, by definition required, and it has to be interoperable with existing government systems. Um, if you have data in one format, it has to play with data in the existing formats. Uh, but wouldn't it be nice if the government could also have civic participation, and we could just define this as crowdsourcing, which we're all familiar with, uh, OpenStreetMap data. Uh, again, what makes data authoritative? Authority says it's authoritative. <laughs> um, and again, you can put quotes at it if you want, but. That's the deal. Um, but this takes trust and data needs to be validated by the authority itself and needs to have opening metadata that says who, what, when, or why, and how it was uh, validated and created. Um, so to put it more simply, here's a chart. Uh, most data is not authoritative and it's just created by whomever and it's hard to contribute to or impossible to contribute to it if you're just the general public. OpenStreetMap, of course, uh, is crowdsourced, but the you know, the government wouldn't consider it, consider it authoritative. Uh, although some countries wouldn't mind, so it's always education to all my statements. And uh, traditional government data, you know, it's often really good data, but it's uh, closed to public participation. Um, so what about this box here? Well, a lot of uh, us have been asking this question for years now, and OpenStreetMap US has been involved with various uh, government actors to try to um, solve this question, and we've come up with something we call a public domain map. Um, first of all, it's not a second open street map. We're not duplicating the entire thing. It's not data that is a general purpose map that lives forever. But what it is, it is a bridge database that lives between OSM and government data sets. And because all public domain map has a permissive license, Creative Commons Zero, uh, then that can go back and forth with government data, but, and it could go also go into OSM. And I've been showing you a lot of bullet points, a lot of graphics, but I'd really like to get into uh, uh, recordings, what this actually looks like. Hopefully this plays. Yeah, there we go. Um, so we have our own task manager at OpenStreetMap US. You can go on to tasks.openstreetmap.us and find it. And it's we've recently redesigned it to include, um, let's see if I can pause it here. Yeah, we include uh, OpenStreetMap projects and we also include public domain map projects. So that's saved to a different database under a different license. But we've forked the OpenStreetMap technology stack uh, to take advantage of all the great tools everyone's put out and makes crowdsourcing really easy, makes development really easy, and um, puts the data in a, in a format that OpenStreetMap understands and can also be converted to all common data formats. Um, so you can go in and browse projects, if you're a member of the public, and say you've heard about a project or you're just trying to discover stuff. Um, for example, 
we want to map all the trails in the US for our trail stewardship initiative, uh, which is a bigger task than you might think. Um, but with the power of the crowd, it is a lot more possible. Uh, so here's an example of how you would make that kind of task. Um, if you've never seen the back end of Task Manager, then this is a, a bit of a behind the scenes look. It's pretty easy. Um, so anyone with access can go in and create the project parameters, set the size of the tasks. This is a really big area, so we want to uh, have a lot of squares there, so that people go in and, and map. Um, name the projects, and not every organization can create public domain map tasks. Um, it's anyone who has a relationship with OpenStreetMap US uh, will be able to create uh, public domain projects, and it's all sort of curated so that we know that we're you know asking the public to map um, you know, useful data that can be used for both databases. It's just going through and setting all the uh, required parameters here. And there's so many options that if you want to customize your, um, your project. If you're not familiar with Task Manager at all, it's a way to, um, to ask people to contribute to mapping campaigns and to split up a, a project into different uh, geographic areas to um, make sure no one's overlapping work. So if I was a mapper, I could go in, select a square, start mapping. And we have before with the ID editor that um, has been stripped of all not public domain uh, imagery sources. And you can go in and start mapping. So if I was mapping this trail that maybe it's never been mapped, maybe it's an open street map, but you know, the government can't access uh, that open street map data very easily. Um, so you can go in and map that data. And then once you're done, you can uh, you'll just hit the save button and it'll upload to public domain map. And all this data exists on its own layer, unlike OpenStreetMap. So there'll be tags that um, say which project you're working on. You know, if you're mapping subway stops that you probably don't care about the sidewalks and so on, because it's um, ad hoc campaigns for specific data requirements from project partners. And then of course, how does it become authoritative data? Well, if the authority says it's authoritative, it is. So in this case, if you have um, some of our partners will uh, go in, like for example, we're doing a pilot right now with the Federal Railroad Administration and they have government people who go in, review the data that's been mapped, um, which is ongoing by the way, and they can say, yes, it's good or no, it's not. And our belief is that a lot of cases, the data will be even better than existing uh, government data just based on um, existing standards. Uh, so project status, we're finishing up the pilot, which is super exciting. Public launch is evident. Uh, we'll see uh, when that gets around. <laughs> see Maggie's uh, across her fingers. Uh, and of course, I mean, it's a great time to get involved. The tool's built, it's um, you know rounding out the rough edges. And next steps are to get the word out. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, and also we consider use cases beyond US government. We love OpenStreetMap, but there's a lot of times where you might want some kind of data that doesn't fit in the map, whether it's some kind of social data, whether it's, um, I don't know, I want to go in and put a point where I smell a wildfire smoke today or, or something like that. Um, so, you know, wherever your mind goes, uh, it might be useful for that. So uh, you can contact uh, info public to map .org with your ideas, and you know, one of us will get the email. Or you can see anyone from the OSM US team here at Statham at the US, myself, Maggie Colley, uh, Jess Bugler. Um, and there's various people around here who have been involved uh, with the project I'm going to shout out. So uh, uh, Jim McAndrews, there in the back, um, Daryl, uh, some other people might have to uh, remind me. But um, yeah, that's it. I'll take some questions now and maybe Maggie will come up and help me with the questions.